Okay, this is a tape that I made um, upon request by several people to show exactly how I go about making latex masks. Uh, I'm going to use very basic materials, try to keep it uh, as cheap uh, as far as the costs go as possible so anybody could do this. Plaster, 16 bucks for a 100 pound bag, clay, uh, oh, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight dollars for a 15 pound bag. Latex is 20, 30 dollars a gallon, something like that. If you really want to make latex masks, you can do it with this. Uh, I'm going to try to go step by step. I'm going to try not to uh, skip anything, but I'm, uh, I'm also trying to keep it all within one tape because the original length of this tape before it was edited was well over three hours long. So, um, Let's get on with it by showing you what kind of clay and the properties of clay. The clay that I prefer to do masks with is um, they call a modeling clay or white modeling clay. It's a pottery clay. And uh, the reason I like it, for several reasons, it goes very quickly. Um, so you can use large amounts and, and get your, your basic shape knocked out. For smaller sculptures, like for appliances and things like that, it's not really good because it, it has a lot of shrinkage because it's mostly water inside the, inside the clay. So a lot of water evaporates out and it, it shrinks. It's not very accurate. But for masks, it's really good for making false hands and false feet for, uh, to go with the mask. It's really good. I get it from Trinity Ceramic Supply in Dallas, uh, where I highly recommend this place to get everything that we're talking about here, except the latex. Uh, Trinity has the clays, it has um, the plasters, eh, different plasters, whatever kind. The plaster we'll be using, they have it. They have sculpting tools, they have tools to help you knock out the shape. All the tools that I'm using, I pretty much got, pretty much got it. Um, Trinity Ceramic Supplies, they have little turntables so you can turn your life cast on and sculpt in different angles, which is a, a must, you must have that. Uh, they have everything. Uh, and this is this two bag box was, oh, I don't know, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that. And uh, you can recycle it as we see here. Uh, once we've done the sculpture, we just tear it off a life cast and throw it in a box and it dries out. Well. Somebody asked me, can you reuse water-based clay? Oh, well, yeah, you can. <laughs> you reuse water-based clay. Physics, folks. What is missing from water-based clay when it, when it dries out? Water. Thank you. Uh, what I do is I take all the pieces and I put them in a, uh, a bucket like we have here, and I fill it up above the surface of the clay with water. Let it sit for two days. Water is being sucked back into the clay. It's being reconstituted. Um, I then pour off the excess water, let it sit for a day to firm up if it's gotten too soft. Um, let it sit for a day. And I kind of feel it until it's got this kind of consistency we're looking at right here, which is kind of a, a oh, I don't know, a, a, it's, it's a buttery kind of consistency. Um, that's a tad too soft, but in a way it's not. At this point, it's perfect to knock out a huge shape like a head and shoulders or a head or whatever you're doing. It's perfect. You would be amazed how fast this goes in comparison to other clays which are, are firmer um, and are harder to maneuver in large, huge handfuls like you see when we start whipping this thing together. What I want to do is I want to show uh, examples of other clays. Maybe you prefer something besides water-based. Water-based sometimes freaks people out because it will dry out eventually. There are secrets, and we'll show the secrets of keeping the water-based water -based clay cool uh, and wet so it doesn't dry out. We'll talk about that down the line. But uh, here is uh, an example of uh, clean clay. Now, I, li I like clean clay a lot. People usually use clean clay specifically for making um, partitions for molds, uh, silicone molds specifically, because silicone will set up really well against clean clay. There's no sulfurs in it. Uh, that's a whole other deal. But sometimes people like to sculpt in it because it's very, very soft and you can move this pretty well. You get a little warm in your hands on a summer day and you can go, go, go. And it's great. And it will not dry out. It, it's activated by water, but only 
uh, to smooth it, uh, get it real smooth. You can get a glass-like finish with, with uh, clean clay, and it's, it's pretty affordable. Um, the next clay is Roma Plastilina. Uh, it's very expensive, uh, but it's considered uh, by artists the clay to use, and it is. It's superb for getting accurate anatomy, uh, accurate facial uh, folds, creases, wrinkles. If you're looking for to do something that looks like a real person, it's probably worth the extra mile to really <laughs> spend a lot of money and get lots of aroma. But if you can whoop that water-based clay, you can get it to do what, exactly what you want it to do. Now, I admit, water-based clay cannot get too many fine, fine details like Roma. But with a mask, your sometimes total pinpoint tiny accuracy is not important. We can get pretty close. Um, but uh, it's up to you, your choice. I like to use the water-based clay. So let's go back to the water-based clay and let's slap it on a life cast and show you how quickly it can be done. I think, and I did this in time lapse, every frame or three or four, whatever this is, every half second here is, I think, every five minutes or so. So I knocked out the basic shape uh, using um, my calipers and, and, and all my uh, scraping tools in about, I don't know, a couple of hours. I don't even know if it was that actually, 45 minutes, an hour. Got the basic shape knocked it out and uh, smoothed it out, got my dimensions and so forth. That's, that's the advantage of the water-based clay. This life cast that I'm using is uh, an old life cast. I'm not going by the dimensions uh, dictated by this life cast. You notice that the jawline runs way down almost on the shoulders. But this life cast is not a really good representation of a general head. You can understand when you start knocking this out that you need to make it big enough where, it, yeah, it will fit your head, but somebody else may want a mask or whatever. It's got to be big enough to fit just about anybody. So I use a caliper to measure um, uh, where the distance between my eyes, the distance between the crown of the head to the jaw, all around. To make sure the dimensions are, are fine. Now, if you want to just make one, if you don't have a live cast of anybody, if you want to make one, you can make one out of wood. You can just uh, cut out a north-south plane showing a profile of a person's head and then east-west showing from shoulder to shoulder straight on view of a head. Put those together with little L brackets, wrap chicken wire around that, staple it in places, dip some um, burlap in plaster, wrap it around that. You got a rough size head and shoulders to make a mask. It's not, it's not accurate thing. We're not doing an actual appliance or something that has to be accurate. This is just a mask to get the, the right dimensions and so forth. Um, uh, so to get the right dimensions for, for me or anybody else, I use myself as a guide. I use calipers. Now last Halloween I did myself as G.I. Joe and it was very successful. I used calipers to make sure my eye, the eye holes were in the right place. Uh, that my jaw was actually in the right jawline, and I had plenty, and I had to get the dimensions to what G.I. Joe looked like, and I had room to spare, and so I ended up putting foam inside there. When you, the mask is big enough where you got room to spare, that's a successful mask because the latex will shrink. It shrinks uh, it's 10, 15, 20 percent overall, and the thicker you make it, the probably the more it's going to shrink. Um, but so keep that in mind. Make it larger than what you need. It may look huge while you're sculpting it. If you look at it and you go, God, look, that thing looks big. That's good because it, it has to be the size of a head plus because it's, it's, it's going to be a thin shell that's going to go over someone's head. So here I am checking it out. I figured out where my eye, my eye line is, my, uh, where my mouth and all that should be. I'm, I'm looking at my reference photographs. Uh, I have reference photographs for apes and um, Gorillas. This is uh, this particular video is showing how I did the gorilla mask, and uh, uh, I'm getting the basic dimensions for my reference material, which is important. If you got any reference material, use it. Photographs, not drawings. Um, and I'm getting the eye sockets and everything dimensionally blocked out where the ears would be, all that kind of stuff. 
and using the calipers again to register where my eyes would be, or the average person's eyes would be. What I'm doing here is I'm using a, a rake to, um, this is a clay tool, to scrape the clay, taking off excess, always shaping it, refining it. When I sculpt, I'm looking at every individual dimension, one-on-one -on -one dimension. When I'm scraping the sides of the heads and the top and so forth, I'm looking at my photograph, looking at what I'm guessing is underneath the hair, a basic shape, the basic shape, where the ears would be. And I'm just working this rake and working it down. I'm looking at my eyes. Uh, I'm just getting, the, I'm getting it geometri geometrically registered, getting a balance, roughing it. Just rough, rough, rough. No need to jump in and start making something look like something right then and there. Get the dynamics first. Get the proportions first. Um, I'm going to cut away and cut back. And I'm going to show here that I've sculpted uh, for a couple of hours on it. And it looks like a gorilla at this point. Uh, I wish I could sh tell you how to sculpt and how to see things and make your hands do that. I cannot tell you how to do that. That's something you have to do. It's individual. Some people build up with clay uh, to get it figured out. Some people cut, just cut away at huge amounts of clay and, and bring it out. I do both. I go back and forth, back and forth. That works good for me. Laying it up, oh, it's too much. Bringing it back, pushing it backwards and forwards. Um, but I keep sculpting, I keep sculpting and sculpting. Well, I'll show you little sculpting tricks that, that, that the tools do, but I can't show you how to sculpt. Um, all I can say is do it and use photographs as reference. As I'm showing here, I made a, uh, a really quick eye. I used a, a knob off of a uh, drawer that's about an inch across. The human eye is close to about an inch across or an inch around. Um, um, I just pressed it into some water-based clay. No, actually, I pressed it into some um, clean clay uh, a couple of times and then poured plaster in there and made these fake eyes that I used to put inside uh, and sculpt around the gorilla's um, eyelids and, and lower lids so forth to get an idea uh, where the eyes are supposed to go and give it some expression. I used my uh, photographs as a reference there also. Uh, right here I'm showing uh, that the clay is still pretty soft, pretty pliable. I've been sculpting here for, uh, I guess, a couple of hours maybe. Uh, and it's still soft. There's still a lot of water content in it. Uh, this is still good. Work on getting the really gross oversized dimensions. Get the general dimensions right. Distance from the brow to the cheek, to the mouth to the nose. Uh, all the large shapes, get them, the dimension, get the dimensions right, this is the time to do it. Because as the clay sets up more and more, it gets firmer and firmer, you can work on your detail that gets smaller and smaller to the point of when it's really, really firm, almost ready to make a cast of, the, um, the clay will take wrinkles and even skin texture, uh, very tiny details. Um, right here, I can show you that um, different things you can, s different ways you can sculpt using different kinds of tools. I'm using a, um, a hoop, uh, different kinds of hoops here to sculpt, uh, dig out the shapes, little flat hoops, round hoops. Uh, I'm also using a, a dental spatula to kind of push and, and uh, compress clay, guiding it around. It, again, I can't tell you how to sculpt. I can just show. Um, examples of how to do different things with different materials and tools. You kind of have to come up with it on your own. We'll look here a little bit of me sculpting some stuff and um, maybe you'll see things you, you pick up on. You can kind of get, get an idea if you're doing it the right way. You can sculpt, sculpt, sculpt and then you can burnish certain creases and, and sculpting uh, gouges down to make them look more rounded. You can soften things. Um, sometimes when I'm sculpting a rough and it's real very soft, I can take um, a terry cloth or whatever and press all over it. 
and it'll press all those hard edges down and soften them and even give it a porish texture to see if I'm even close to the, the anatomy that I'm looking for.